Number 1 This happened to me and my best friend around 10 years ago. One day, we had a project in our Spanish class, and we decided to make a sleepover at her house. So since at the time we were pretty new into our friendship, this would be my first time sleeping over at her place, so we were both pretty excited. The day came and I was stoked to be going over to a sleepover. However, since this was my first time being over to her house, we had no idea where she lived. It was way out in the country, so naturally me and my mum got lost trying to find it. Eventually, we did find the place. My mum dropped me off and Sarah and I started talking about our project. We got stuck in and got a lot done and after a while we headed up to her room. Her room had a sort of side room attached to it. There wasn't a door, but there was a space for where a door could be if that makes sense. Inside that room was an old computer that didn't work anymore and had a small little day bed. That is where I was going to sleep because apparently Sarah is a bed hogger, but that didn't bother me very much. So it gets pretty late and we decide to finally go to bed. Now, it takes me a good hour or two to fall asleep, whereas Sarah on the other hand doesn't take the blink of an eye. So about an hour after tossing and turning, I start to hear this whirring sound like the computer is trying to turn on. I remember telling myself, I know that Sarah told me the thing didn't work anymore. So how can it be turning on? I open my eyes and look, and sure enough, the computer that is right beside me has the green light on and is in fact turning on. I was a little freaked out, but at the same time, I just thought, well, maybe it's just updating or something. I noticed something odd though, when the monitor of the screen came on, the computer itself was not plugged in. That is when I freaked out. I ran into Sarah's bed, moved her over and went and hid under her covers. I stayed there for the rest of the night. I eventually fell asleep, but the computer was shut down by the time Sarah and I got up. Of course, typical. I told Sarah about the computer and she just looked at me puzzled. She said it never done that before and shrugged it off. So anyway, years passed and I would stay at Sarah's house more and more often. I noticed that the computer would always turn on by itself whenever I slept over, but never for Sarah. So she continued to ignore my stories. She got married and moved out about two years later. I didn't really visit her during the next few years due to me moving three hours away. So the rest is from her account of what happened. The real hauntings started a year after her auntie had moved out of the property. Sarah came back to clean up the house and moved in. Not long after her aunt packed up her final belongings, she said that there was an uneasy feeling once her husband and her had entered. They would hear voices and things would move about on their own as time went on. For example, after about three months of being in the house, Sarah began to notice things. She and her husband would be sitting in the living room, watching television, when pictures that belonged to her grandparents would randomly fall off the walls and shatter on the floor. She tried to justify that it was an old house and it was just settling and it was all because of the shift. Then, one night, as Sarah and David slept, a family heirloom that was tucked away on an inaccessible shelf was moved onto a couch facing the opposite direction of a table. When the couple woke up, they were completely perplexed. 
They moved the couch and the table back and put the heirloom on the shelf and returned all the furniture to place. They went about their day and that was the end of it. The very next morning, they awoke to find the same heirloom moved into the same spot as the morning before. This started to make the couple nervous, especially Sarah, because she could not justify what was happening. Once again, they moved the furniture to return the heirloom, and the next morning, the heirloom was once again in the same spot. Sarah could not handle it anymore, and she decided to put away the heirloom as well as the others that were on the same shelf. Not long after, Sarah and her husband told family and friends about the experience, which prompted the visit of the husband's brother. After downloading a free ghost app on his phone, they sat outside the back porch at dusk and turned on the application. Sarah thought the idea was ridiculous, but she decided to humour the boys. The app would just spit out random words, and Sarah would just laugh and make jokes about it. Suddenly, the app spoke out, Cows. This caught Sarah's attention. Her family had raised cattle on this property up until she was about 15 years old. A few minutes passed and the application called out died. The brothers laughed it off and the app was saying that the cows had died or that it was saying something goofy until Sarah reminded them that her uncle had died in that house only a couple of years prior. The final straw for Sarah was when the application called out her maiden name and then the name of the family who had owned the house before her family had, approximately 45 years prior. There's no way an application can just spit out those proper nouns. One night, whilst the couple watched television, there was a knock on the wall in the dining room. Again, Sarah tried to justify it as the house settling in, but her husband was sure it was an actual knocking sound. He went up to the wall where the sound came from, knocked back and waited. A few seconds later, there was a returning knock on the wall. Eventually, Sarah's brother moved in and said he would hear tapping on his window at night, always at the same time. 3 a.m. with three taps, three times, three minutes apart from each set of taps. By this time, Sarah and her husband were used to the ghost hauntings, so as long as it didn't decide to attack, they ignored it. Finally, after living in the house for about a year and a half, Sarah decided to sell her home and move on. They contacted a realtor who came and took pictures of the house. Appointments were set for people to come and look at the house and the selling process began. One morning, the couple did not receive a message from the realtor, informing them that there were potential buyers coming to the house. The buyers and the realtor knocked on the door, knowing that the couple were most likely still inside. The couple slept through the knocking and later woke to find several messages on their phone. When they called the realtor back, she asked why they were running through the house, opening and shutting doors whilst potential buyers stood outside. They questioned the realtor and asked her about her comment and she explained that the potential buyers heard doors banging, opening and shutting on the right side of the house when they knocked. She demanded to know why they kept on opening and shutting those doors instead of letting the people in. The husband explained to the realtor that they did not do it. They were asleep in their bedroom on the opposite side of the house. The realtor also explained that the buyers experienced an uncomfortable smell coming from the house, like rotting wood. She seemed concerned because she had not smelt it days before when she came in to take pictures. After several more complaints of the smell, the realtor returned to the property to try and figure out what was going on. When she walked in, she could not smell anything and was very perplexed. It didn't take long for the couple to understand what was happening. Whatever spirit was in this house 
did not want Sarah to leave it. Finally, an offer came from an out-of-state buyer willing to accept the house sight unseen. The couple leap at the offer and quickly moved out and from that day, Sarah has never returned to the property. However, she has passed by it. The new owners have purchased and placed a new mobile home on the property and no one seems to be living in the actual homestead. To this day, neither she or I know if there is still paranormal activity within that house. Number two. So this happened not too long ago. I was in the doctor's office helping my mum to get my grandma in and out. My grandma is a very large woman who has very bad knees. The office was packed. So we ended up being there for an hour longer than expected. While waiting, a strange man sat across from us. He started off by offering my mum a tattoo and then telling us that he had done Skinner on himself whilst he was in prison. He also said he was about to fail a drug test and might be going back there. As you can imagine, we were already pretty freaked out and I was avoiding eye contact at all cost. He told us how he had to call into work and how his girlfriend had recently passed away. This didn't add up because he talked about how he had to walk to his appointment because he didn't have a job. He also then said his girlfriend looked great for 50. Several minutes passed of him repeating the same story over and over. He got up to have a smoke and then he stopped directly behind my mum and I and asked us to tell him when he was called. I won't give his name out, but we can call him Artie. Artie was outside for almost 15 minutes before sitting back. Almost immediately after, my grandma was called. Needless to say, we shot up out of our seats and were gone within seconds. When the nurse came to collect information, she saw that we were all distraught and nervous and we explained the situation and she went to look for Artie. He was gone by the time she'd got there and the doctor he told us he was going to see wasn't even on call. After the appointment, my grandma had to go down to the lab, so we took an elevator. Artie was standing there when the doors opened. It was almost like he was watching us, but there was no way he could have known where we were going at that given time. He started talking to us again, asking about how glad he was to find us. He then got called back for his drug test. So, we got my grandma's lab results and booked it out of there before Artie could see us leave. Today, I learned that he was in prison for child molestation and had raped 13 young girls around the age of 7 to 16 in my area. Being a 16 year old girl myself, this frightened the hell out of me. I have no idea what would have happened if we'd have told him where we lived like he was asking us. I'm just really, really glad we were able to leave without him seeing the car that we were in. Number three. I am a 15 year old female. And at the time this story took place, I was 11. Me and my family went camping. My dad brought his fishing rod to go out fishing. He always takes me with him because <laughs> I won't lie. I'm quite good at fishing. It was around 11 p.m. or so, and very dark. Perfect time to go out fishing, Dad. Anyway, me and my dad gathered all our fishing equipment and started walking to the small hill next to the lake, which is our fishing spot. Once we settled in and started fishing, it was really dark. Thankfully, the lights from the houses nearby helped us see well enough so that we didn't have to bring a flashlight. The fishing was terrible, not a single catch. So I was bored and sleepy and I decided to walk back to our tent to sleep. Whilst I was gathering my stuff, 
I heard a huge splash. I turned around to see my dad in the water. Me being the brave girl I am, I decided it would be a good idea to jump him and save him. Bad idea, because one, I would never get out a 35 year old man that weighs 200 pounds out of the water. And two, I could barely see anything. Also, it's impossible to swim with the huge waves every three seconds. I ended up holding on to him whilst we held onto a rock. We couldn't touch the ground, it was too deep even though we were close to land. I didn't even notice how but I was slowly pushing him down underwater so that I would go up for air. My mum told me to wear a life jacket but I didn't listen and that could have prevented me from going down in the water. Then I heard my dad pray out loud which then I did myself. And then out of nowhere my dad stood up holding me in his hands and we went back to land. We both sat there exhausted because being in water holding onto something whilst huge waves batter you for ages isn't as easy as you think. As we were going back to our tent, I thought, how is it possible for my dad to stand up on the bottom of the lake? It's like 40 feet from where we stood. I asked him and he said that whilst he was praying, he felt the ground rise up to his feet and that let him finally leave. Knowing my dad has had his fair share of creepy experiences, I wasn't shocked. I know you won't believe this, but what I'm telling you did happen and I would never lie about something like this. Number four. One night I was over at my friend's house for her birthday party. After a while, we all started to get bored and it was pitch black outside. So we decided to go play Manhunt. Everyone liked the game and there was only five of us so nobody stayed inside. Each of us took turns seeking and hiding and giggling when no one would find us. At one point, me and the person who was having the birthday party were the seekers. After counting in a little shed so that we couldn't see where anyone went, we finally came out and began to look. I swear, we must have been looking for over half an hour and yet we only found one girl who ended up going back inside because it was three in the morning and she was getting tired. My friend and I were just about to give up when we saw two silhouettes standing on the neighbor's trampoline. At the time the neighbors were out of town so we figured it was our two friends. But why in the world would they just stand on the trampoline so still and silently? And how could we have not have seen them before? We must have been past here like 30 times. Figuring that this was them, we began shouting that we found them and they could come down now. But the figures just stood there ominously. We were confused. And then all of a sudden we heard footsteps from behind us and turned to see our friends coming towards us. My friend and I shared a look of utter terror and turned back around to see the figures still standing on the trampoline. The friends who had been hiding asked us what was wrong and since we were barely able to speak, paralysed by terror, the birthday girl simply said, the, the, the trampoline. They were petrified and just as scared as we were and they quickly legged it back to the house. On our way back, the birthday girl and I glanced over our shoulders and we saw the two figures on the trampoline vanish. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I want to give a huge thank you to the four subscribers who submitted their stories. It's not easy sharing an experience that utterly terrifies you. Bear in mind that if I didn't use your story today, it doesn't mean I won't use it later. So please stay tuned for the next subscriber special. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe and share the video so that others can enjoy it too. Remember that if you have a story that you wish to submit, 
you can send it over to my email which can be found in the description below. But please, remember to say that you give me your consent to use it though. You can also start following me on social media to see what I get up to behind the scenes as well as our upcoming projects. But be warned, there will be spoilers. But anyway, for now guys I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome and I'll catch you in the next one. It ran straight into the euthanasia room and under the big machine that they still used. We shut the door so it couldn't get out. So we moved the machine out the way and there's no cat. It's nowhere to be found. The cat is freaking gone.